Well, unfortunately, you're right. It's all part of a, an agenda that's been planned out for decades, and it all revolves around this information about everything that we're doing, and the technology is unfortunately here now to spy on everything we're doing. Unfortunately, Chris, we're going to have to leave it there. We have James Evan Pilato on the line, so let's bring him up to start going over foodworldorder.com because, again, as always, we have so much information to get through on that front. So, James, thanks again for your time tonight. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, man, I appreciate it. I'd make one comment about the James Bamford story. I, I subscribed to Wired. It came in the mail, and it's, my jaw dropped as soon as I kind of uh, opened the magazine. Inside the Matrix is the short version of the of the article title that they put on the cover. But it is. It's the scientific dictatorship. Silent weapons for quiet wars. And that can be technological, but it can also be biological. And I think a transition, James, from, from what you meant, an effective world government and the social engineering of the climate catastrophes. A piece from TheAtlantic.com. And again, these are all posted on my site, foodworldorder.com. And I mentioned, I believe, last week... A new contributor to the site that's done so much work, pretty much the majority of the work in the past week on Food World Order is from my man, Adam. So a huge thanks to him and, you know, our, our friend Morgan Lesko of Wiki World Order for, again, just helping get all this information out. How engineering the human body could combat climate change. This from TheAtlantic.com. From drugs to help you avoid eating meat to genetically engineered cat-like eyes to reduce the need for lighting. The Atlantic has a wild interview about changes humans can make to themselves to battle climate change. And this sources back to a guy named S. Matthew Liao, L-I-A-O, I may be mispronouncing that, Human Engineering and Climate Change. And he's got the article, and you can get it in PDF, about engineering ourselves. James, would you like cat-like eyes so you could keep the... <laughs> I would like them for many reasons, but not to combat <laughs> climate change. But yes... Um... I, I would just direct people to what's up with that dot com, which had a, a nice take on this from March 13th, um, where basically they said even even Bill McKibben is panning this as crazy. And if Bill McKibben is panning your idea as crazy, chances are it's really crazy. So. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't think this is a topic or an idea that's going to gain much traction right now, but that they're even floating this as type of a test balloon is is quite worrying, I think. Mm -hmm. So let's get even I don't even know if it is stranger. From the Daily Mail, glow in the dark sushi made from genetically modified fish becomes latest food craze to sweep America. Sushi that glows in the dark has become the latest must-try food craze across America, inspired by genetically modified fish first bred for scientific research, and I would argue that they're still being used for scientific research. It's just on us. A video showing how to make the glowing sushi has become a huge hit online. The recipe uses Glowfish, a brand of GM fluorescent zebra fish sold by Yorktown Technologies, which are available to buy in pet shops. And the article goes on, but we've discussed these things in the past, and the article makes reference to the glowing mice. And and have we also had glowing cats, James? Has, we, have, has that story been out there as well? I believe so. I, I certainly remember glowing monkeys, and I think there were mm. glowing cats at some point, wasn't there? Yeah, it's hard to even keep up with the monstrosities as they're being created and thrown out there, but as people might know, I did a, a podcast episode on the so-called skeptics recently, like Michael Shermer and people like that, and I've been looking at so much of their websites lately, and of course I've come across some of the skeptic takes on genetic engineering, which of course is a great, wonderful, scientific leap forward, and anyone who doesn't think so is just a, a Luddite and a charlatan. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it just disgusts me how they basically say, oh, there's no difference between genetically engineering f plants and foods and things and, and, and just breeding new plants and foods. It's the same thing. It's just, you know, helped along with technology. Well, uh, I tell you what, I, you're a researcher out there. I'll give you a hundred. No, wait, I'll give you a thousand years. Just breed me a fish that glows in the dark naturally without uh, doing something like this to it. And, uh, and you know, you, 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 you get a prize. You get a biscuit. <laughs> Um, no, it is just such a out in your face monstrosity, but there it is. It's so, it's so cute and cool. And if we can make it a fad and sell it to the public like that, oh, I'll, I'll take it down with seconds, please. James, straight from Monsanto.MediaRoom.com. This is one that just kind of makes you scratch your head. Monsanto company donates $100,000 on behalf of Farmer Coalition for Support of Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. On behalf of the National Black Growers Council, NBGC, Monsanto donated $100,000 to the Washington, D.C. MOK Jr. National Memorial Foundation Project. 
I think this is something interesting that we see in 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 the arts as well. And you'll see companies like what you know, what does Coca Cola or Nike or any of those places care about the arts? Oh, it makes them look good, and they can write it off, and it's a pittance, but it's great PR. Yeah, yeah, because Monsanto is is a name that's just so revered by the public, right? <laughs> no, actually, they yeah, they have to buy any scrap of publicity they can that's not uh, that's not negative. So. And and what's a hundred grand really? Yeah, exactly. What is a hundred grand to a company? Like that? <laughs> Here is another disappointing sellout and we grab it from natural news new chapter organics sells out to procter and gamble now of course joining the global corporate elite procter and gamble global corporate conglomerate that sells a vast array of consumer products containing cancer causing chemicals and petroleum derivatives is now the proud owner of new chapter organics which was one of the more promising nutritional supplement companies we'd seen in a while New Chapter co-founder Paul Schulich announced, quote, For us, this has been a dream come true. This is what we have been wanting to do since we started doing this 30 years ago. The world and the United States needs this, end quote. James, this is yet another case, and, and I held up and shook. We've got a bottle of, of bee food complex from New Chapter, and it's great because it's one of the few sort of food source, food-derived vitamin Bs. Burt's Bees, they sold to Clorox. You know, we've we've made reference to it before, but again, you know, I work at a grocery store here in Portland. And you could spend all day basically going down the shelves and going, oh, yeah, that one, that's really owned by Kraft or that's really owned by Smucker. So another kind of disappointing case. And it's going to tie into, I think, what we've already been talking about in a way. That's just another silent weapon. And and it's important to understand this isn't just reflexive anti-corporatism for the sake of anti-corporatism. There is a history behind these corporations and how they gained their their conglomerates and how they amassed all their wealth and what they've used their wealth for. So when you look at Procter and Gamble, you're of course talking about Clarence J. Gamble, who was one of the founding funders of the eugenics movement in America. Mm. He was a leader in Margaret Sanger's Birth Control Federation. As uh, as uh, Clarence Reverend Childress Jr., who was on last week about the Black Genocide, talked about, he was the person that uh, that Sanger was writing to about the Negro project to exterminate the black weeds. He was the one that was actually the uh, the recipient of those letters from Sanger. Uh, he was funding all of the the, the different uh, birth control uh, ideas they had in, in foreign countries around the world to make sure those brown people don't breed. Um, and and of course, th this is the legacy of Procter and Gamble. It was I mean, Gamble was one of the founders and funders of the American eugenics movement. But now, from what I understand, one of his heirs is uh, promoting some movie that's trying to mix 9-11 truth and things in with flying saucers and uh, Taurus shaped objects. So I guess we're supposed to think of the Gamble family as a good thing now. Hmm. Is that Thrive? I wasn't mentioning it by name, but it oh, sure is. Okay, sorry. Because <laughs> I, I haven't watched it, but I, that's something I've, I've had a ton of people mention that to me and ask me about it, but I, I've never seen well, it. Well, fair enough. If people get into this real information through things like that, good on them. But honestly, I'm not into the uh, the flying saucer, um, tourist worship things, and the, uh, the multi-million dollar production on that documentary leaves me a bit... Leaves me a bit cold and uh, asking questions about how the uh, the Gamble family is using their money now that they once used to fund eugenics. But uh, I don't see anyone <laughs> bringing that up in the interviews. <laughs> well, let's let's maybe maybe we'll see that dude uh, run down uh, Hollywood streets naked, touching himself in a couple of days. <laughs> 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 but I digress, James. Uh, quickly, I'll, I'll just mention some of the other things on Food World Order. Again, there is a a, a wealth of health information available. At the center of healthcare fight, a farmer's 1942 case. This is a, a good piece from the New York Times that gets in kind of the background of the fight against Obamacare and how it goes back to a 1942 decision, Wickard v. Filburn. So uh, another great way, I think, to kind of dig into the past, because, of course, you know, you're not going to hear that on your nightly news. And certainly that article wasn't on the front of the New York Times. One from ActivistPost.com, Sweet Victory, when the science says the farm beats pharma, and it talks about, of course, all the confirmed and documented, you know, they, they call them condiments and spices, but they're basically the, the, the source of life and health that we've used for millennia, but again, in, in so many ways, they kind of just get boiled down and, and destroyed into, you know, something that doesn't have any nutri nutrients to it when we could really kind of take it back. 
But on a bright note, James Billboard dispenses free cakes to London commuters in bus shelters. Agricultural markets still unbalanced and unfair, farmers say. That's from civileats.com. And we reach a even longer than usual binge and purge, James, with the disgusting title of Cinnamon and Slime with your GM fetal soda. <laughs> that does not make me hungry enough to to dig in, but I suppose we'll have to do that. We're just coming up on the break here, so we'll take a, a short break before we do that. But uh, just on that billboard story, uh, that's that's a fascinating headline. What's it about? First came the cupcake ATM. Now there's a cake dispensing billboard. With just the touch of a button, the automated fixture distributes up to 500 Mr. Kipling ca cakes per day. This is in the UK. I've not actually heard of these cakes. Along with a sweetened aroma to tempt London commuters, this going back to Ad Age magazine. The novel publicity stunt is part of a campaign by the British cake company to get customers to try one of their wrapped cakes. Mr. Kipling. Mr. Kipling. Would that be Rudyard Kipling? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, interesting stuff. All right. On that note, let's take a short break. We'll be right back to finish up Food World Order here on Corporate Report Radio right after this. All right, friends, we're back here on Corporate Report Radio to wrap up tonight's broadcast with James Evan Pilato of FoodWorldOrder.com. So we're breaking down all the latest food health and environment issues and stories from around the world. But just uh, before we head into the binge and purge for tonight, on a side note, I was mentioning it on the broadcast last week. Of course, I am one of the world's largest Smashing Pumpkins fans. And yes, uh, Billy Corgan, we were talking about him last night on the broadcast with Julio Rauseo. And they're in Chicago, and as it turns out, apparently Billy Corgan has just done a big interview for uh, Alex Jones and Infowars, so that will be going up next week. Apparently he's spilled the beans uh, even more so on, on chemtrails and other such issues, so um, I, I'm looking forward to that. Good on him for, for coming out there. It's always a, a big deal when a, a big celebrity comes out and gets a lot of people who never, ever look at this information to look at it, so... So good on uh, on him and uh, Alex Jones and the team there for getting that together. I'm going to be watching next week. So just thought I'd throw that in there. And uh, and unfortunately, Billy decided, I guess, not to appear on Corporate Report Radio. But there's always hope, right, James? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Or even media monarchy. But on that <laughs> note, let's get into the binge and purge. All right. So like I, like I said just a little bit ago, foodworldorder.com is kind of bursting at the seams thanks to, you know, the help of new contributors that, that we've taken on, you know, and with the help of, of Morgan at Wiki World Order and Adam in Canada, another another Canadian. And, and I think I've said before, you know, help from Australia and, and Canada has always been really great for media monarchy. But the binge and purge, cinnamon and slime with your GM fetal soda. James, this is even longer than usual binge and purge, so I'm only going to mention some of the key points that, that I think folks should check out. The top one, though, cinnamon challenge YouTube craze gains millions of viewers yet frightens health professionals as I add the copycat effect kicks in. This challenge of eating a teaspoon of cinnamon without using water can, of course, cause you to choke and die and does amazing damage to your lungs, not to mention if you may also have asthma symptoms. But there are all the videos of kids all trying it because, you know, the, James, maybe we should start, you know, of jumping off cliff videos and see if that works. <laughs> yeah, but, we shouldn't even laugh about that. That's, I know, I, I know. I bet it would happen. Yeah. So no, the, exactly right, the copycat effect. And, and uh, what's the name of the author that you always cite on that? Oh, that's uh, Lauren Coleman. Right. And he runs Copycat Effect. Dot com. Some of the other bits on the binge and purge that I think are important, James, an update on the soda world. Obama agency rules Pepsi's use of aborted fetal cells in soft drinks constitutes ordinary business operations. On a positive note from foodsafetynews.com, Del Monte Fresh Produce drops lawsuit threat against Oregon because our own Oregonian said that it came from a Del Monte farm in Guatemala. And so... Their protestations have dropped, which, of course, makes you wonder. The Department of Homeland Security plans to build a high-risk virus center in the heart of America, replacing the deadly and dangerous Plum Island lab that's off the coast of, of, of the New York and in, in near Rhode Island, I believe. Let's move it to Kansas, to the middle of the country, so it has a nice, equal, even opportunity to infect the entire United States. 
Blue strawberries raise more GMO questions and so much more, James. It's all on foodworldorder.com, and I relaunch Media Monarchy Podcast tomorrow. Exactly right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. For anyone who doesn't know, of course, James does have his own podcast. Uh, it's been on hiatus for a little while as he switches networks, but it's going to be on Revere Radio now. That's it. I'm stoked. Excellent. Yeah, so am I. Looking forward to it. Episode 251. Be there. Mm-hmm. Be square tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, what time? 10 a.m. Pacific time. 10 a.m. All right. And, of course, you can also get the uh, feeds from new, uh, from MediumMonarchy.com, all it. the other sites. So, James, thank you for your time tonight. Thanks and thank so you much. to all of you out there for listening in and for your calls and all of your uh, support and contact through CorbettReport.com. It's very much appreciated. And there's still one more day in the week, so I'm looking forward to doing this all again with you tomorrow night. So, until then, thanks for listening and take care.